Studio A in Texas, USA. It's the award-winning All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in real time. Just ahead, a review of our new car of the week, the 2020 Toyota Tundra. This week in automotive history and the stories making auto news headlines. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show for Saturday, November 14th, 2020. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars, and King Conrad DeLong. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad that you could join us. Let's not forget Jeff Zekin. He's uh, sitting right off camera. And I know that he will. you'll hear him throughout the show, uh, whether we like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, at any rate, uh, we have a guest uh, joining us right now, and we want to welcome to the show Mr. Stephen Gillum. And, Stephen, good morning to you. Good morning. How's it going? Very good. Thank you, and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, where are you going? Looks like you're riding somewhere. <laughs> I just got back from a soccer game and then uh, stopped and helped the car, car guy on the side of the road real quick. Oh, good Samaritan. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to talk to you um, about uh, an event uh, you've got coming up, Kids in Cars. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, so we're doing our second Kids in Cars today. Um, it is primarily fun. Speed Advocates does all kinds of family-friendly events, and so I decided last year to toss out a uh, Power Wheels meet. So Kids in Cars is uh, showing up all the Power Wheels, the kids come out, they play with them, they ride them around. We, uh, we section off a area of the um, parking lot, and basically it's a car meet for the kids. That's a great idea. It's a lot of fun, too, because, you know, everybody wants to get their kids involved in their car world. Uh, I do with my kids. They're both very car-centric as well. And what a greater – couldn't be a greater way to do it than load up the power wheels, bring the power wheels, let the kids drive around. Everybody gets to take pictures uh, and, and show off their big cars along with the kids and their little cars as well. So I, I understand that uh, this is taking place out at Rudy's Country Store. Uh, we're out there yeah. on uh, 249. Yeah, it's out there on 249. It's at 24503 Tomball Parkway, uh, just south of Tomball, Texas, uh, right at uh, 249 in North Park, North North Point. Yeah, yeah, and uh, to get there from the south side, you're going to go up and you're going to turn around at 99 and come back down to it on the service road. Um, uh, you can do that, or uh, if you exit uh, North Point, you can actually take a left at the light, and you can go through the McDonald's parking lot, and it'll take you through the back way as well. So, okay. Uh, so, and I understand that the event runs uh, for a couple of hours, three hours this afternoon. Is that right? Yep. We're doing it from 1.30 until 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, as soon as I get off of this, I'm going to head up there and start getting everything toned off and ready to go. So, uh, are you are you raising money? Uh, how, what what's the what's the whole idea behind this? Uh, it's just for fun. Uh, I mean, as adults, we have our car events and stuff like that. We I I prim primarily focus on the meets and stuff like that. Um, but us adults get to go out and get to shoot the with our cars and. Um, People bring their kids out all the time. I figured, why not? Why not let the kids bring them out, show them off, and just hang out? So it's, wait, not, it's not for any clubs or anything. Just for fun. For fun. So where do the power wheels come from? I mean, do you have to have your own, or is this something that you come up with? No, no, no. I mean, I, I don't have any power wheels of my oh, own, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the the parents and stuff bring out their their toys. Uh, a lot of them will bring out a truck with uh, the power wheels in the back. Uh, the last one we had, we had a slingshot trailer and a power wheel slingshot. That was pretty cool. Um, oh, there's, a, there's this guy who brings out a Grand National and he straps his kid the Lambo to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, kid, my kids had power wheels, except I cheated. I took a... Uh, of course you did. Well, of course. You know, you get a power wheel that can pull a wheelie. Now, that's trick because usually they have the plastic tires. That yeah, spin. they don't, they don't have the... I took uh, bicycle inner tubes and cut them. So it was about the width of the tire and slid them over. The, so it slid. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like tire the change. Tires. Like, but yeah, yeah. No, it was like, it was like drag yep. slicks. They would get so much grip when my daughter would hit the throttle, she'd have to lean forward or it'd pull over and <laughs> she'd end up on her back. We had a, 
we had a uh, Chevy Bel Air out last time because uh, we do like a little mini drag. We close off a part of the parking lot and then we do like 60 foot races with uh, the power wheels. And there was a little uh, like 57 Bel Air that was popping wheelies out there. <laughs> so I gave out the secret. Now everybody knows how to get better traction in the yeah, power wheels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what a great what, what a great event, though, because everybody wants to bring the kids, but they want to do something special with the kids and to uh, bring the power yeah. wheels out and do it. And uh, Rudy's Barbecue, I come out to the meet with not regularity, but I come out to the meet from time to time, and it's always a big meet. But, you know, on a, on a Saturday afternoon, so at 1.30 is kind of where their lunch rush is over, but they're always looking for a little bit of traffic as well. So, you know, you bring a lot of people, and that's a Absolutely. great spot because everybody driving by sees something's going on, and you probably get a lot of stop-in traffic as well to do that. And it's um, good food, too. Oh, yeah, Rudy's Barbecue is, uh, is killer food. Their turkey breast. Sign me up. Smoked turkey breast. <laughs> don't don't go there, Don. Yeah, Don, yeah. <laughs> Bite your lip. Anyway. So, and uh, you're also going to be helping uh, uh, out at a motor, um, Houston Raceway Park as well. The Rise uh, and Race. The Rise and Race yep. on the 22nd. You guys are helping uh, uh, promote that with uh, William Hodge and, uh, and Craig Gibbs. So, so, tell us about that. What is that about? So Rise and Race, uh, we last, uh, what was it? I think early spring we did we did like a little track day out there. We kind of got together and uh, been slowly bouncing off the ideas of each other because there, there is the open market because coffee and cars is no longer going on in the morning. And so we're like, why not do a track day, but at the same time, you know, have, have a place to host an event such as a well, Rise and Race uh, People come out, do the, they do the car show in the parking lot, hang out, chat. But at the same time, they can also walk over and spectate the guys that are doing test and tunes. So we have, we have a 40-car cap for the, the test and tune. And that's going to run all day. And then we'll have the, the, the rise and race portion of it will be from, like, 8 to noon. And then anybody that wants to at noon are going to close off the track for about 30 to 45 minutes and allow people to get out there and do burnouts if they want to and show off, you know, keep it off the streets, keep it safe. Like just if people like to show off, Hey, we got a spot for you. There you go. Yeah. Well, if you'd like to burn up a, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of tires, come on out. <laughs> Absolutely. Instead of doing it on, you know, a feeder street or in a parking lot. Right? Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing about this event is you, you say test in tune just for our listeners and watchers to understand what that is. Basically, the track is being rented for the day by those 40 participants that are going to be running the track all day long. You're having the car show next to it. But, you know, those guys may, you know, hopefully get in 15, 20 runs uh, up and down, you know, down the track to get an idea of what their car is capable of doing, whether it's a street car or not. But keeping it on the track is really where you want to be uh, because all this uh, street racing has got to stop. And uh, there's way too much of it going on. I think there was a, a video or a picture this week of, for some reason, it's always some guy in a Mustang that wrecks. But uh, yeah. Yeah, some guy in a Mustang kind of clipped a, clipped another pickup truck. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's great to talk to you, sir. And we uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, Stephen Gillum. Well, and so uh, we invite. If they want some more information about the 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 rise and uh, rise and race, where where do they need to go? Um, you can either go to Speed Advocates on Facebook, Instagram, or uh, speedadvocates.com and personally email us if you're interested in the racing portion of it. Um, or you can show up on November 22nd uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, spectator fee is going to be $10 per car. Make it family friendly so that way you're not, if you bring the wife and the kids out, you're not spending $10 a person. So load up the car, bring the whole family out. Show off your car. It's ten dollars to park, hang out, and watch the races. And yeah, so if anybody's interested, we got we had a couple spots left in races. You can either personally DM me at uh, speedadvocates at gmail, and I can get you information or. Uh, check out the website. And I've, po and I've posted both links on our webs on our uh, Facebook page. All right. I appreciate that. Stephen, thanks so much. We appreciate you joining us today. Stephen Gillum uh, with uh, uh, Speed Advocates. So um, there you go. There's the latest on that. All right.
All That'd right. be fun. Yeah, sorry for the audio. What's, it, what's up with the audio today? Not real sure. I think it's on their side. It's uh, this, the remote speaker The humidity system. in the air. No, no, no. I think it's just, you know, we're, we're getting more and more people to come in on Zoom who don't necessarily Zoom a lot. And whether it's they're using, it sounded like what Stephen was doing was he was using the sink in his, because he drives a Ford truck, so he was using the hand, the remote on that's his Ford truck, was. and that's why you were you were kind of hearing the echo in it, and can't control some of that. It's all your fault. It's always <laughs> my fault. Particularly you, if you've it's, talked if, to Angela. If it's Ford's, it's your fault. <laughs> no, Absolutely. it was your fault for sending her to that restaurant. I, I still, I, I still pay for that one. Sending her to what restaurant? The one in San Asia, Francisco? Asia SF. Yeah, Asia SF. That's a great place. Um, yes. How'd that work out for you? Not very well. I wasn't there, but... What do you mean you weren't there? I, I, I wasn't there. They went, Angie and Rochelle. They had an absolute hoot of a time. Austin was sitting in the back corner away from everybody so he could be feel safe. <laughs> yeah, sit with your back <clears throat> to the wall. <laughs> Yeah, Asia SF for if you're up not. against the wall. He's a redneck. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Asia, if you ever go to San Francisco, which I don't know why anybody would anymore, but um, it's close. back in the day. No, back still today. Uh, there's a restaurant there uh, that uh, it, it's 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 a drag place, men dressed up as women, and I have to tell you that there are some very Easy. attractive. Attractive men dressed up as women, so much so that uh, those of us that are straight um, are actually taken. <laughs> well, now it's just something you, you've done. Yes. Don was tempted. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know. I'm glad this is your story and not mine. So you want me to tell the story? I'll tell no, the story. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll keep it clean. It's, uh, it's, it's 15 after. Isn't it time for a break? No, it's not. <laughs> So here's the story. Oh, so I was on the drag racing tour. Ironically enough, it was drag racing. And uh, my road partner, Rob Geiger, who wrote at the time for NHRA.com, uh, and I, we had a mutual friend, and he did marketing and PR for Mach 1, which is um, an expediter, basically. And you guys were at Sonoma. Uh, yes, we were racing in Sonoma, and we had a night off, and... and uh, Th this guy Steve and his wife invited Rob and I to join them at Asia SF, Asian Fusion Restaurant, Asia SF, San Francisco. So we go into this <laughs> nondescript okay. uh, uh, area of San Francisco. All the buildings were painted white, and most of them were abandoned. And this restaurant's right on the corner. Right on the corner. And uh, so the vestibule, if you will, where you were greeted is a very tiny little, you know, two-person kind of thing. And you go in, yes, I have a reservation uh, for four people. Go in. There is absolutely no one in this place, okay? And it has a bar, kind of the horseshoe thing, the bar down the middle, and then people with bar stools around the outside of the bar. And then all around the entire restaurant are uh, small cocktail tables with bench seat and then two other seats by them. And then there are some long tables. And so we were there for five minutes, and all of a sudden this horde of people come in, all different nationalities, sexes, all of that. As a matter of fact, there's a wedding party there. Ah. Okay? Um, so uh, a huge wedding party. must have been 30 people. They sat them at a long table. And within 30 minutes, the place was packed, packed with people. So this hot, smoking hot little waitress comes up. Hi. Here's our menu. And uh, this is the way it works. We serve it courses. We have five courses. And um, uh, tell me what you would like as far as your soup is concerned, uh, egg drop or whatever. <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll bring it right up. Okay, great. We'll have that. So she runs off and out comes the first course soup. And then, you know, we have the main course and then we have dessert and appetizer, all this stuff. And everybody's eating, and it's a big, big deal, right? I am clueless. Uh, and then they clear the tables. No, just hold. You just have to hold your horses <laughs> there, mister. Don't read ahead. <laughs> and so we're at the end of our meal, 
It's still relatively early, 7 o'clock or so. And the waitress says, um, um, I'm going to be gone for a while. Okay, if you all would just stand by and join us, uh, I'll be back. Uh, but I think that you'll really enjoy this, so you just stay right where you are. Okay. And um, the lights go down, and the announcer comes on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Crystal to the stage. Don's waitress. What stage? There's no stage. Oh, no. The back bar, thing down the middle where they normally keep the booze, there's no booze on it. It's a runway is what ah. it is. So back at the back, there's a curtain. Out she comes. Our cute little waitress. Lip syncing a Barbara Streisand song. I'm going, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and Steve and his wife are over there on the floor laughing because Rob and I are going, you've got to be kidding me. So we start looking around at the other waitresses and thinking, something's just not right here. Or it is just right. <laughs> well, my illusions of getting a date that evening with this hot waitress <laughs> just went right down the toilet Actually, because probably, as it turns got better. <laughs> as it turns out, our cute little waitress was a man. Imagine that. <laughs> and uh, I turned every shade of red, and then after that, I just kind of enjoyed the evening. And she says afterwards, she said, um, by the way, you know, we have a private dance club downstairs. If you'd like to go, just let me know. <laughs> okay. $400 <laughs> later. No, no. No. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that kind of a place. It was a dance venue downstairs where people would go down there and dance with, with your straight date. Whether it's male, female, all of that. It was. Uh, so you and Rob went down there and danced? <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, we did. Y'all have been on the road for a while, huh? <sighs> it was quite so, the experience. In the future, when you hear Don talk about his uh, year <laughs> on the drag racing circuit, remember this. <laughs> And if you'd like, we to, will remind him. <laughs> and if you if you would like to make a comment, send your comments to info at inwheeltime.com, and I'll try to answer them in the in order they dis were discreetly. received. <laughs> discreetly. <laughs> All right. So there's the story for the morning that has absolutely nothing to do with cars, other than it was a time in my life that I was marketing and PR director for a top fuel NHRA drag racing team, and my road partner was Rob Geiger. And he's still involved, isn't he? Um, yes, um, he yes. Not to the level he was. I, I think that he wrote for Jegs this past season. He, he's got a lot of things going on. He, he does a lot of marketing and PR for anyway. All right. Well, um, there's always a story to tell, you know. Oh, Don. <laughs> Hi, it's me. Your egg drop soup will be right <laughs> out. <laughs> Time now for this hour's car review. It is the 2021 Toyota Tundra truck. So I guess it's a truck review. Here are the trim levels. They are uh, the SR, the SR5, the Limited, the Platinum, the 1794 Edition, and the TRD Pro. We had a chance to drive the TRD Pro Crewmax. Um, it features a special suspension with larger Fox shocks, BBS forged wheels, and a front skid plate that kind of differentiates it from the rest of the Tundra lineup. It is considered a standard pickup by your government. Seats up to six, but in this particular case, it seated five passengers. It sat five passengers. Exterior changes from last model year, none of them. Uh, the exterior features, well, it's a truck. It's a great big truck. And what is different about this particular truck, you'll notice that it's got a hood scoop on it. Uh, the other Tundra trucks do not. Uh, this truck is big. It is a very big half ton. Double hood scoop air intakes, rugged appearance, go anywhere stance, and also has some special exhaust tips on it as well, make you feel like you want to go off-roading. What I liked about it, it felt like it could do desert jumps, to be honest with you. Uh, what could use improvement? I don't know. How do you improve on that? Interior highlights of this particular vehicle uh, has uh, new instrument gauges and layout. 
Uh, it does have the same center stack as uh, the other Tundras. There it is. Uh, red stitching on the leather seats and dash for this particular TRD Pro. What I liked about it, it's user-friendly layout, very simplistic. What could use improvement? More off-road TRD Pro labels on the inside. I'm gonna, if I'm taking guests, I want them all to know. See, they've got the stitching got it, on the it, back seats. Yeah. I, I want to have a label on the dashboard. I want to have a label on the back of the headrest from a back seat passenger. Well, you do kind of. Is that not a TRD in the st center of the? Well, it is. Console? Apparently, that, you weren't listening because I just said. But that. you want more of that. I want more of that. Yeah. Uh, engine is a 5.7 liter V8, which, by the way, they have dropped the old 4.3 liter. That's not even available anymore. One engine, 5.7 V8, 381 horsepower, 401 pound-feet of torque, and I don't know how many newton meters that translates to and don't care. Transmission, six-speed automatic, uh, tow rating up to 10,000 pounds, uh, haul rating up to good. 1730. Uh, 13 miles per gallon city, 17 highway for a combined of 14. Think that's terrible? Well, guess what? All of the truck V8s are pretty much in that same category. Why? I don't know. And what did you get? I got 15 over 357.9 miles. It's a big truck, though. It's a, it is huge. Yeah. You have no clue. Stand next to it, and you're going to go, oh, my God, I had no clue that yeah. it was this big. And then you get inside of it and drive it. It's this thing cavernous. is big. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. What I liked about it is its capability. Very capable pickup truck. What could use improvement? Well, I would like to see some uh, engine options. I like the V8, don't get me wrong, but I think that they should have a diesel option and they should have a turbocharged V6. I'm or, just saying. Or a, uh, a hybrid that gives an electric boost. Or that. They need, I think that they need to have some options when it comes to that because if you're going to compete against, <coughs> pardon me, the other three. The other the three, three. You've got to be able to compete head to head. They can't. Ride and handling. Um, well, it is in the TRD Pro trim package, so <clears throat> it does ride Pretty and handle. Pretty firm suspension. Actually, no, because with the Fox shocks, it's got dual reservoirs, so there's a lot of wheel travel. And you know, like I said, you could jump this thing, and it would do just fine. Uh, I like the off-road nature of it. Uh, what could use improvement? More off-road stuff. Winches, lights, etc. Again, at aftermarket that's available, but I think that um, Toyota would do themselves a, a favor if they would order, have that stuff available to order. And it probably is as a dealer add-on item. Uh, that I would the hope dealer, so. Through their accessories program, probably has all of that stuff available. I would like to think so. Um, base price fifty-two seven eighty. Price is tested fifty-four four fourteen. Base model price is 33575 So right there in the ballpark with everybody else. Except the base model price. 33575 Ford F-150 you can get for 28940 The Chevy 1500, 28600 The Ram 1500 is 32245 I didn't get to all the details as to why all that. This is a review about that truck. So if you want to find out more information, Toyota.com. But you like the truck. I did like the truck. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this particular truck I did like. I like the off-road nature of it. Um, it, yeah, I kind of felt like I needed to do some jumps. <laughs> like Seriously. the Dukes of Hazard. Like the yeah, exactly. All right, time now for the national race calendar. Well, the racing season is, to a large degree, coming to an end. There's still a couple of things going on. Uh, actually, about 25 minutes ago, we don't want you to switch to it, but it's going on for the next 12 hours, is the 12 hours of Sebring, which is generally a March race, but with the pandemic, they switched it. It's going to be the final race for IMSA, the uh, Cor Team Corvette. In Cor Sebring, Florida. In Sebring, Florida. The uh, Team Corvette, I believe, has already won the championship. Uh, on the points in the GTLM category, I think the the uh, DPI, the prototypes, that's still up for grabs as far as who the champion's going to be. <laughs> the Acura and the Cadillac are in the running for it. So, and our friend uh, Alec Udell is down there running in the GT4 category. In the BMW? Uh, no, the Mercedes. Um, uh, I AMG, can't keep up AMG with him. GT. AMG GT. Yeah, wouldn't it be rough? Let's see. Do I drive the BMW last year or the Mercedes this year? Um, and to be 24 years old, <laughs> sign me up. 
And, you know, the all-American good-looking guy oh, yeah. on top of all of that. Well, I, I already have that. Just like Jeff Zekin. Right. So um, the Turkish Grand Prix in Istanbul is this weekend. Uh, Istanbul. Istanbul. There's a song about Istanbul. And then uh, the Bahrain International Grand Prix. There's no song about Bahrain. No. Is uh, on the 27th. The NASCAR series is done. Uh, Chase Elliott, son of Bill Elliott, won the championship. Yeah, but did you see that video that I posted on our website? Is that with him doing the donuts? The donuts. Yeah, it, well, he had a parade through Dawsonville, and then uh, he did donuts at some intersection. All the whole town was out. And but that was pretty cool. Uh, both Jeff Gordon, who was the youngest uh, Winston Cup champion, and Chase Elliott both won the championship race on the exact same day, just 22 years apart. And, you know, another interesting fact, uh, the last time an Elliott won the national championship for NASCAR was 1988. That's the same year that the Lakers won the NBA Finals, which they did this year. It's the same year that the Dodgers won the World Series, which they did this year. The number nine car won the IndyCar Championship in 88, which it did this year. And then the number nine car uh, and an Elliott won the uh, NASCAR Championship, which it did again this year. So how ironic that uh, uh, those similarities. You know what they should have? Yeah, yeah, to I told you and there's no secret anymore that nascar is going to put dirt on top of the bristol half mile and they're going to have a dirt race i think it's a, i think it's great brilliant you know that what they need to have though they need to have a dirt race for the old time nascar old timers like a, like a bill yeah uh-huh, like a senior citizens would that not speed's not really a factor there yeah. but would that not be an absolute riot to see, uh, you know? That would draw a huge crowd. Huge crowd. On TV. Oh, yeah. And all the retiree guys come on come on yeah. back and, and, and race. All yeah. of them. Get, yeah, Richard Petty out there. Uh, uh, Kenny. Wa- <laughs> all the wallets. All everybody. Get well, everybody out If you there. go back in time, back to the 60s, uh, you know, right now they're running 30-ish, well, in a normal season, 30-ish NASCAR races. Back in the 60s, they were running 70 and oh, 80 yeah. NASCAR races. They would have a race on Sunday. They would have a race on Thursday. You know, some of these guys would be running, you know, multiple races every week. And there was a lot of uh, uh, quarter-mile and half-mile dirt tracks. Uh, one of the shows I love is, uh, what is what is Dale Jr.'s new show, is Forgotten Raceways. Yes. Um, what what a cool show that it's is! It's a very cool show. We need to get him to come out and do Meyer Par- Meyerland, Meyer Meyer Speedway. Meyer Speedway. Well, there's here, a school he, there he, now. And while he's here, he can come in on the show. <laughs> it's that was where I was going with that. But is make it, that is happen? It, is it the X still there from the old? Figure uh, I don't eight track? think so. Oh. They've they they built a school there. Is there nothing left uh, that he could walk around? Turns, turns two and three, I think, may be there. That's all. It, it, it's interesting on his show how they walk around the old track and some of the structures. He had a track at his house. Oh, I didn't The know go-kart that. track at oh, his yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Where, where he invited all the friends over on a, I don't know, Wednesday night or something. They sat around and drank beer, and the wives got out there and fought with each other and, and uh, <laughs> raced go-karts and <laughs> Have Housewives <laughs> of NASCAR. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a great idea. Oh, that would be a good idea. Would it? The Housewives I of I should NASCAR. patent that. You should. Yeah. Or get a copyright or something. All right. All right. Well, it's time for us to take a quick break. Um, I want to remind you that the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, TuneIn, Google Podcast, and Podcast Addict. And the In Wheel Time Car Show continues after this. Quick break. Stay with us. 